Hello, it's you and Pe, and we are back with another video. What are we doing today? So yesterday, Julius Malema had an interview with Kai FM. Mm. Well, it was released yesterday, but mm. so he was speaking about his manifesto and the things he wanted to achieve okay. if he was to go into power. Yeah. But again, his most controversial take is his open border policy. Yeah. So, well, it's most it's mostly controversial to South Africans yeah. for, for various reasons. Yeah. So let's let's just have a let's just take a look at this clip here. I'd love to hear this. I and then wait. you tell me what you think about it. Okay. This continent is one. It has always been one. And you can't say, I don't like apartheid, I don't like colonialism, but I support borders. The borders were imposed on us by the colonialists during the scramble for Africa. And therefore, in undoing the work of colonialism, the borders have to be done away with. And you can't say, when you do away with the borders, these people are going to come into South Africa because they are starving where they are. We are starving in Limpopo. There is no border between us and Gauteng. But we have not left our homes there and the Limpopo is, is, is peopleless because they went to Gauteng where there are resources and because there is no border, they are flogging. There. No, no one will ever abandon their countries to come here. So what do you think about that? I agree with him. I'm sure you like... Yeah, I'm sure you know my sentiments with this thing. I, 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 I really support it, to be honest. I think the our animosity towards it is one because of not truly understanding where he wants to go with it and not understanding the pan-africanism of it and trying to reach the ultimate like the end goal of of pan-africanism uh, but then i also understand why we are frustrated as well is because we see the immediate effects of it is that oh no you know it's like now we're scrambling for food you know as south africans within south africa now it's like Oh, oh! If, if 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 other people come in, then we've you know we've got more people that we need to fight with and things like that. Like, and we can't we can't deny that that is a little bit short sighted. It is kind of short sighted. It is short sighted in the bigger picture. But like I said, I understand why. I understand why. Until we sort out the bigger problem within Africa and the whole of africa becomes healthy to stay in we will not find a lot of people flocking to south africa so i feel like in order for us to 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 get to that to that goal we need to suck it up a little bit you know what i'm saying and then yeah and then i'm serious i i i totally agree with it <laughs> No, it's great. It's good that you're making an argument for this. Um, yeah. I applaud. And, and a lot of EFF supporters feel the same way as well. That yes. What Julius is saying is probably correct and makes sense to them. Mm. I completely disagree. Right? Mm. I disagree. I want to I wanna touch on his first point. Mm. Right? His first point is you know, he wants to do away with... With borders completely. With with with, with colonialism. And he wants mm. to do away with colonialism. Yes. And, and, and borders. part of that. And, and part of that is the borders, right? Yes. It's, it's fine. Mm. But how far are you going to take it? Because the language you're speaking is colonial. The clothes mm. you're wearing is colonial. The cars you're driving is colonial. But, okay, but I the get that. The infrastructure you're benefiting from is colonial. How far are you going to take it? How far are you going to take it? So you see, it's like but he's, he's cherry picking. To be fair, he's cherry picking to the be borders. fair, the stuff that the stuff infrastructure and things like that, you we can't just be like, oh, it's Kenyana. We don't know how how uh, like infrastructure is, is a, a human thing. Listen, it's a human thing. We had our own kind of infrastructure, but hey, we can't we can't account for what it could have been because we don't know what it could have been, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we know the need for in infrastructure and like it would be silly for us to do away with buildings there. We can't purely, we can't purely just like, you know, give credit to colonialism for that. Like, uh, black people africans had a huge part in terms in in, in part uh, a huge part in building what africa is as well it, may, it might have been on the physical aspect but it's all but it's but, but it's, it's main it's it's influenced by colonialism because that's before then 
Yeah, we didn't have we didn't have okay. skyscrapers. Like, we didn't have skyscrapers before they came, right? Yeah, that's okay. We didn't have borders before they came. Yeah, that's why are you okay. targeting the borders and not the skyscrapers? Why doesn't you want to remove the English language but the, and other colonial languages before yeah. the borders? But like, we can only do that once we get to a point where we have like a a, a, a unified form of communication. Unfortunately, English has kind of done that all over the world, where you know they they fought for their language to be. So, yeah, so that's my we point. can't. He, we won't be able to understand each other in South Africa alone. We can't understand each other, all of us, with with the languages that we have here. So I mean, at, uh, yes, we could have decided that we choose one South African language, but then that will defeat the purpose because we can't communicate with the rest of the world as well. That's my point. My point is he's cherry picking. He's cherry picking the border specifically when there's when there's other things he, he could be worrying yeah. about to to decolonize South Africa. I feel like it's first. a silly... Uh, I'm I, saying, why I, don't you yeah, decolonize? You, why but like, you decolonize? I feel like it's silly that you guys are focusing no, on I'm that. No, I'm, I'm just speaking on his point. Yes. He says he wants to decolonize Africa. Yes. But he's starting with the borders. Why not start with language? I feel why not start with um, colonial attire? Why not start with colonial culture? I mean, it's one at a time. It's one uh, It's one at a time. The first so start with step the artist to- thing, right? with the most important one the most vital one is for that that's the one that stands in the way of unity for africa so one thing at a time I disagree. so so to truly unify africa yes he, he his idea is to totally eliminate the borders which 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 kind of goes hand in hand with also what i believe in it's like we have to be one so that might be a huge way to assist in us actually being one as africans so well, that is the important one slowly but surely we might even stop having like south african or nigerian or kenyan or what what identities we we, we uh, culture sorry we might start having african culture but the, but you see it, this is this is where people fail to understand like mm. bef- before before colonialism there was the, the, the there were tribes i understand that there were tribes, right? i'm not saying there's and anything there borders, wrong and there were borders within kingdoms and yes. tribes and all that stuff it, like that yeah it's but just then that we his didn't... problem is it's it's the borders that were imposed by yes the the, the, um, the people who yeah the and truly right? say like separating the people in terms that now we are like countries and because all of this stuff all, all of the stuff already existed all yes i also but his understand main problem that. Is that it's because it's it's the one but now there's to... like actually they put actual borders whereas it's like this is my part of the land we people used to still be able to move so around you we weren't gonna make borders open i doubt that we were gonna make actual borders like they have done then... we probably would have like as time went because we were seeing the rest of the world has some sort of so, separation it was gonna lead to the same thing so so okay but my, my main point here is that he's cher- he's cherry picking a specific a specific part about colonialism instead of wanting to address all of it mm. that's that's my main point so this first point but mine you heard yeah my counter argument to that is mm-hmm. that that's the most important one i feel that's why he's starting with that it's not like he'll neglect all the other ones like that's the first step towards a, a, a big cleanse and okay, that is cool, cool. unifying us and that's the perfect way to start unifying us where we stop fighting over territory now and all of that but we start fighting for ourselves as a whole cool i have a i have a nice point to that too okay going going to his second point and when he says that uh people in the purple are starving but they're not moving to how thing I think I think I think he, uh, I think I heard what you he said, but I feel like he didn't mean it like how he, he it came out of his mouth. I, it's just factually wrong. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm wrong. saying. I I don't think because it also contradicts the point that he was trying to make. So I think it didn't come out of his mouth the way he intended. No, he's to. trying to. He was trying Maybe to, he, he is saying he, he's trying to. He's trying to um, assure South Africans that people will not migrate oh, to South Africa. Yes, because they're starving there. Yeah. yeah. Factually, so just because borders are open, yeah, not people will not migrate to South Africa. But, it, it, factually, but look, he is wrong. Uh, factually, currently, because of the current state of things. No, let me let me make my point. Okay. Let me make my point. Mm-hmm. Factually, he is wrong mm-hmm. because if you if you if you look if you if you look at the most populated province 
in the country. Gauteng. It's Gauteng. Yeah. Why is that? Because people flock from other provinces to Gauteng. Because of op- economic opportunity, right? Yes. Gauteng has the highest economic opportunity mm-hmm. in the country. Mm-hmm. So it is the most densely it is the most densely populated Popul- yes. province in the mm-hmm. country. But well, I'm not even done there. Gauteng it's the smallest province in the country. Yes. But it's the most densely populated. Okay. Cool, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have you, you you have you have three economic hubs. One, yes. Johannesburg. Yes. Two, Cape Town. Mm. Three, Durban. Durban. Mm. If you look at the populations of those three mm. cities, those are three of the most densely populated cities in the country. Yeah. Why? Because people migrate there for economic opportunity. Yes. 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 I'm not even done. Mm-hmm. You have Northwest. I mean, you have the nope. Northwest province. Yeah. It is the biggest province in the country by far. Mm. But it's the mm. least. It's, it's the least populated province in the country. I mean, because it's dry. It has. It has. It has just over a million people. But it's. It almost takes up one third of the country. Mm. Why? Because there's no economic opportunity there, yes. right? Yes. Okay, cool. So what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen when when all the borders are open? Let me just finish my argument. What's gonna happen when all the borders open, right? Mm. Let's take a look at three of the most, uh, three of the biggest economies in Africa. Mm. One Egypt, mm. two Nigeria, mm. three South Africa. Mm. Mm. All right, those are three of the most biggest uh, economies in the country. Mm. When you open all the borders, people are gonna migrate to places with the most economic opportunity. Mm. If you look at if you look at Egypt, Egypt has the biggest uh, economy, mm. but it's smaller in size than South Africa. Yeah. Nigeria, Nigeria has a slightly a slightly bigger e- economy than South Africa, mm. but mm. it's also smaller in size than South Africa. Yeah. In terms of in terms of size mm. and population, both of yeah. these countries uh, are smaller than South Africa but have bigger populations. Mm. Yes. South Africa is the biggest country out of the three, mm. but has the smallest population. Mm. So what? Which three of those countries have has the biggest economic opportunity? South Africa. Exactly. Okay. So what's going to happen when but, all, when everyone but can migrate po- freely? What's going to happen? But the point is, is to not keep those those three countries no, as what's gonna the economic hubs of no, Africa. I'm just, I'm, I'm just asking. We need to s- spread out Africa's riches, Africa's I'm, you know activity. Answer the question. Answer the question. What's going to happen? Well, maybe at first, at first hand, that might seem like the case, or that might be the case. But like, if we actually put in the work and not just sit there and open borders and not do anything, then that will be the problem. But if, if, okay. if so, I'm, hand in hand to the open border, they also preach like you know industrialization. They also preach creating opportunities. So it's like yes. beyond just South Africa, it's creating opportunities in Africa. So it's so like what's going to happen to now, those countries that don't have people will migrate to places by choice, and that's that's okay. Yes. Now, and, now you you where, can go to Zim because Zim's economy would it, something will be also happening in Zim. There will be you know economic activity in but Zim. Which countries, so you choose which countries will have the most economic opportunity? Well, if we don't spread out things, then then we might have the danger of still of that of them still being the so same. So you if you if you if you just if you just take if you just take it based on the context of how everything is operating right now. Yeah. Right? How everything is operating right now. Mm. If if you remove all the borders mm. in in Africa, yes, people are either gonna migrate to Nigeria, yes, to Egypt mm-hmm. or to South Africa. But South I'm Africa has the most economic opportunity. And yes. then on top of that, Nigerians are already migrating out the country because that mm. that country is overpopulated. Mm. Egyptians, that's a Muslim country. So if you're not Muslim, you most likely will not migrate there. Yeah. So a lot more South Africans are going to migrate to South Africa because South Africa is more of a free country mm. than those other yeah. two. This is what South Africans are complaining about. And it, I, I don't, I didn't, I didn't even have to bring up all these numbers here mm. for the average South African to have. Yeah. The average South African already has intuition because of what they're seeing already. Yes. People are already with the borders mm. migrating to South Africa legally and illegally. Yes. Now, when you remove these borders, 
more people are gonna mi- the, the people that were hindered by the borders yeah that couldn't migrate to uh, South Africa mm. because of the borders are gonna migrate to South Africa because yeah. they don't they, there's nothing hindering them from yeah, migrating yeah. now when you have when you have most of sub-saharan South Afri- South Afri- sub-saharan Africa it's migrating down South, to South Africa South, mm. what's gonna happen to the South African well I mean, life is not going to be easy. Less economic opportunity, mm-hmm. right? Cool. So do you see the dilemma that the South African has with with this open border policy? And why, I get and the why him dilemma. Saying, why him saying that uh, people will not migrate here because they won't leave their homes? That, that's just false. That is just factually false. And but I do kind of believe if, that to a degree. Like, Look, if you look, look at South Africa, South Africans. I mean, a South person African, wants to be home. No, if you look at South Africa, South Africans are a different dem- demographic from the rest of Africa. Yeah, we migrate the least. Yeah, that's why he's even using this example here, Kuti. Mm. Uh, people from Limpopo do not migrate to Gauteng, even though that's yeah, South Africans. South Africans migrate the that. least out of most Africans out mm. there. We don't migrate to other countries because mm. we don't need to. We have the most economic opportunity. Yeah, right. That's so. True. Now we're not migrating like anywhere. What would the reason for me be leaving here and going to them? Yes. Or going. We have we have no reason to migrate, and everybody has a reason to migrate here. What's gonna happen in that in that scenario? What do you think is gonna happen? So these are the plights of the normal of yeah. the South African that's crying about this open border policy to say that mm. you're not putting South Africans first when you're saying all these things yes. and when you think about it. For that. me, like I'm sure, you know, it's just like, it, yes, I do feel like the open borderism might be a little extreme, right? But I do believe in the whole African coming together, working together and, you know, being... So to that point... Because with borders, you can still keep people in their places because you still... I'm still sort of assigned to the space, the space, right? Then as now, I've got a choice to just go and stay there. I, I hear that. That's why I don't really have an argument for this one of, you know, so, the, the... Yeah. So to that point of African unity, mm. there, there is a problem where... Julius is not considering that other African countries do not want what he wants. So, yeah. recently, Nigeria has passed a bill that give levies, to, high levies to companies that, that hire foreign uh, people over yeah. their own people. Mm. So, Nigeria has given uh, businesses the incentive to hire yeah, their, Niger- their Nigerians mm. over, uh, over foreign people. Mm. Namibia has just issued a warning out to foreign students who are mm. studying there from other countries mm. to tell them that they must not look for jobs or any side hustles yeah. because they don't want they don't want foreigners to interfere with the natives economic opportunities yeah. Zimbabwe just now Zimbabwe just now just passed the bill they're raiding all the foreign owned spaza shops in the country and removing any foreign own any foreign owner who owns a spaza shop there because they want Zimbabweans to run the spaza shops in Zimbabwe so mm. looking at all these things happening in Africa other other African countries are putting their citizens first. Yeah. But here, here's a man who wants to put Africa before Africa before South Africa, and that's I what think, people have I issues think, with. I think I think the thing is with Julius is that he is he th- he he's he's more of a macro thinker, but at the same time not so macro. Like by that I just mean like he looks at the bigger picture, the bigger goal, the bigger vision. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, in an ideal world, this is what we're working towards. And he's sharing that, but people are seeing the immediate sort of things like how, how we, you know, how's that going to be possible with these realities? And maybe he's not really answering to those concerns. He's not really, do you get what I'm saying? He's saying saying things that are just false, even. He's just saying things that are just false, just to, just to, prove his narrative that to me just tells me that this guy actually is not he doesn't know what it's either he doesn't know what he's talking about or he's lying to push his agenda because mm. if you're saying things i was like hmm, okay that makes sense you know yeah but now he's actually saying things that are just false like yeah. false. people are not migrating to Gauteng. like how could you say like we know like limbo for people are in Gauteng. Yes. like hell of all a the breadwinners all the breadwinners <laughs> hell of a lot in mm, and then they just drive home mm. with the money they make in Gauteng. They don't mind driving from Joba to. Lim- so why would you say Lim- something Lim- like that if if your story was was true or legit? Mm-hmm. 
so so this is this is but Judas that's and a, i feel like you just made a oh just made a bad example so this is this is judas and biggest like achilles heel in his political campaign mm. in terms of south africans because mm. everything else that julius preaches like most south africans it's are proper. on board with that mm -hmm. besides besides the people that will be negatively affected by the um land distribution without compensation act which is mostly white people white people are against julius because of that he wants to yeah. stop white, mono white monopoly capital yeah but the rest of south africa all, the, all of his messages they're happy with mm. besides the open border policy one yeah because it's gonna disadvantage it, no, i'm a bit shaky on the open border to be honest even if if maybe the end goal might be that but we certainly are not ready as africa for that even if it might be ideal in 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 in, in future based on my arguments you can see why people are very skeptical of it yeah and based on your arguments you can see why a lot of if are, are very about optimistic it. about it mm. So yeah, if if he can sort this one issue out, I think he'll be able to win over a lot more voters. To me, it's yeah, I I, I see a, a lot of red flags, and yeah, if he doesn't put South Africans first, I have a problem with that because a lot of countries all over the world put their citizens first yep. before a bigger agenda. So yeah, you guys just let us know what you think about this whole situation. Yeah, let us know. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And keep watching. Goodbye. We'll check you guys in the next one. Africa's biggest challenge is basic migration. Prime example, you have Senegal and then you have Gambia. These are two countries that's right next to each other. Literally two and a half hour drive. That's like me going to Macon, Georgia. But to get to Macon, when I get to Macon, there's a border waiting for me where I got to have my passport shown and I have to have a visa to get to Macon. Imagine the 50 states in America, everywhere that you go, if you have to fly right now from Atlanta to New York, you need to get a visa or you need to show your passport and go through immigration. Would you be inclined or even motivated to travel? No, because you can't get there. So now imagine how that affects trade. Imagine how that affects the basic economy in the continent. This is by design. They know as far as, as long as they can keep us locked in our little corners and our little cities and countries and I mean, there's no reason why that continent have that many presidents and they none of them thinking the same.